Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we'll be going over how to install AMD's Catalyst driver. This will be the third installment of this video for me, and uh, one of the people in the last video requested that I do this video again, because uh, AMD has recently released their Catalyst 15.7 driver, as well as their new R9 300 series cards. So, uh, without much further ado, I guess we're going to have to get into it. Oh wait, never mind. I got things I got to mention first. Okay, so it's really important to understand that all Linux distros pretty much come with an open source driver for your graphics cards and you are not actually required to install AMD's proprietary drivers. Um, so your computer will be functioning without these drivers and it will function just fine. Uh, you, you will probably see a bit of performance increase, and by a bit I mean a noticeable performance increase with the AMD Catalyst drivers, but the open source drivers will work. Um, the other thing is, for this tutorial I will be using Ubuntu Linux, which I know a lot of people are like, oh that's for rookies. Well, here's the moral of the story, most people you know, use Ubuntu Linux, so I'm going to be using it for this tutorial. I mean, it's a lot like liking Metallica. I mean, you can like Metallica, but everyone's going to tell you Pantera is better and that you're a little whiny person that I can't, with other words that I can't say. All right. <laughs> so, um, there are a few things that always happen with these that I don't know if they fixed yet. There are always the cards that should be supported but aren't, and um, we'll go over supported cards in a moment. And then there's also um, a low-key XML workaround that a guy named Scott Walter provided on two videos ago now for the AMD drivers and um, I'll include both I'll include that in the description and I'm not gonna go over it because it doesn't really happen that often so um, if you need that the instructions for that will be in the description um, for this page right here we're gonna have to open up a terminal so we can determine if our graphics cards are supported really quickly so LSPCI the vertical bar, which is located right above the enter, it's called a pipe, then grep, and then in all caps VGA. And what this will do is it'll list all the things that are connected to your PCI slots and look for specifically the VGA cards, which are your graphics cards. So again, I still have these two R9 270X cards that I've had for the last three videos. And um, those cards are all still supported. Uh, the website's changed a bit because supported project products now has its own tab my my cards right there on that series um, you need to do you do need to make sure your card is supported by this driver because if it's older than the 5000 series it's not supported and pretty much on every video so far someone's asked me why this really old card isn't supported that's AMD didn't do that you know if you really need it um, I would have to talk you'd have to talk to AMD directly and AMD does provide legacy drivers, but they're not that great, and I would recommend just sticking with your distribution's open source drivers in that case. Um, for this, um, for this, I you need to go over a few things first. Um, I'll be going over a lot of things, but in the release notes, uh, AMD has really bumped it up with this version. They have actually come with a full PDF of... Uh, instructions on how to install it and I have to say their documentation has been stepped up tremendously that'll help you a lot um, that can be found um, with the oh, under here it is oh, installer notes you can check here for the installer notes and that brings you oops, to this tab right here and, and that'll show you the whole PDF and the other thing I use is the uh, unofficial wiki which can be found here uh, I find this is actually a little bit out of date because there's no instructions for 14 or 1504 but it's really not any different than it is for 1404, which is what I'm using here. So we have now determined that our graphics cards are supported and that our operating system we also need to check is supported. Here you can check, here's the versions of Ubuntu, here's the versions of Red Hat, here's the versions of SUSE, OpenSUSE, SUSE, I don't really know how to pronounce that, I never used it. It says distribution specific packages are available for these. I'm using this operating system right here and I don't see an option for it right now. If that does show up in the near future, I will check for it and I'll do a tutorial with the um, specific packages as well. But for this tutorial, we will be using the bash script method, method which will actually require you to use the terminal, like very little, but you will have to use it. So what you're going to have to do now is uh, download the file. I've already done this, so we don't need to do it again. Um, 
here, once you get the file downloaded, you just click Extract here. And that will bring up this AMD driver installer. So what we got to do now, open up a terminal, change directories into the Downloads folder or the location where you put this file. And we can just type ls to make sure where we are, or pwd, which is print working directory. And that shows us where we are. And right now, we need to run the bash, or we need to, before we run the bash script, um, we need to make sure we run a apt-get update and then apt-get dist upgrade. So I'm going to run that really quick, and this may take some time. So um, I will probably be editing part of this video out. <laughs> And what I'm doing here is this is the um, this operator with the double ampersand um, is um, there. I'll explain it once I'm done typing. Typing and thinking is not my strong point. Yeah. Okay. So the ampersand thing here in the middle of this terminal means if this command succeeds, execute this one. So. Enter your pseudo password, and this will download a bunch of stuff. And if it prompts you here, click yes. Oh man, there was a Google update. Oh, this is going to take a while. Alright, so that's finally done. And now that we're done with that, we are going to be entering a really long command, which will be in the description. And... There we go. I copied and pasted it from my other monitor, so that's how I got this so fast. Um, these are the these packages are not required for every version of Linux or even every version of Ubuntu, but this is kind of my end-all be-all because some require it, some don't require it, and if you already have it installed, then it'll just say it's already installed and we don't need to worry about it. So that is pretty much just why I'm doing it this way. Um, I'm going to go over these really quick. Uh, the Linux Hunter Generic, Build Essential, CDBS, Fake Road, DH Make, uh, Dev Helper, Dev Conf, Lib32, GCC1, Library Standard, C++6, DKMS, LibQt, GUI4, WGit, which is probably included in every version now, Exec Stack, uh, Lib, <laughs> Elf G0, said that wrong every time so far, and then DH Mod Aliases. So enter that, and, um, Surprise! Yeah, I'm already at the newest version for all of this because it's like my fourth take on this part. So we'll just keep doing that. And then now that we got everything installed and all the packages that we need to get installed, um, I'm gonna type ls really quick to make sure I got everything. Okay, so now we see this amd driver installer dot run file, which is the file right here. Um, what we need to do is sudo and then bash amd dash and then I use tab to autocomplete and then it will give me the dot and so then we can see dot run and then we're gonna click enter on that so now this is bringing up the uh, uh, driver installer alright so now this baby's up we're gonna click generate distribution specific packages that's the easiest way to do it so and then we got this license agreement here and if you don't really want to read this or you watched my last video, you understand why I call this the ex-girlfriend clause. Just accept that it happened and move on. And so here we are running Ubuntu and it usually detects your OS perfectly. So usually you can just go to build package for detected OS, which in my case is Ubuntu trusty because I'm running 14.04. So then click continue and it's going to appear to be doing absolutely nothing right now because these progress bars won't move. So I'll probably just be back when this is done. Alright, so that finally finished, and uh, I have a pretty powerful computer. That still took me about four and a half minutes to do, so uh, that's don't don't freak out if it takes a while. Um, at this point, you probably want to build the view log, but since I messed up some configuration stuff with my computer, that I have to do it this way. Normally, you guys could just click uh, view, build, view package build log. But I gotta do it this way. Um. Okay, so then 
in here it says uh, stuff um, like if you had any packages you didn't install, they would just uh, they would come up after this line, and it would tell you how to install them using like apt-get, or you can or if you didn't do it right, you can use sudo apt apt-get dash f install, and that'll fix all dependencies on your system that aren't met. So then you can do that, and if you run that command, it'll do that. But otherwise, it'll say package has been generated successfully, and you can go on. If anyone wanted to see my script for this video, I guess you could have paused it right there. Um, okay, so after you click exit, it'll ask you if you want to install the generated packages. You, you do. It makes things a lot easier, so just click yes. And uh, I'm already running this version, so if it fails, that may be why. <laughs> Alright, well, it appears that it's going to work out just fine. Um, it's probably going to tell me that it has like a screen not supported thing. Yeah, unable to find supported screen selections. So, it installed all the files, and that's all I really care about right now. So the next step we need to do is run ATI config. So sudo ATI config and um, dash dash initial because I like to do this every major driver release and I consider this one to be a major driver release. And then if you have crossfire cards or if you're using uh, multiple adapters then you can just go ahead and uh, use dash dash adapter equals all so that it sees all of your cards. And if you're using multiple monitors, you would just use the dash F method, and that way it won't tell you that unable to find supported screens thing. So then go ahead and hit enter on that, and it has created um, a backup file, so if you ever get something really messed up, uh, your original XORG will be saved under this file name. So if you ever get something messed up, you can boot into um, failsafe graphics mode and copy this file whatever your file right here is back into the file named xorg.conf and reboot and that way if you mess anything up it'll go back to the configuration that it had before that's really important to mention and at this point I'm going to have to reboot my system to show you the next part so I gotta I'll see you guys on the other side alright guys so after we've rebooted we can go ahead and open up the dash or whatever you use to search in your operating system and open up the Catalyst Control Center Administrative. The administrative version allows you to make changes. Enter your super secret root password. And here's the Catalyst Control Center. Uh, once you're here, you can click on Display Manager, and it's going to prompt you and say, you need to apply these settings right now. Click OK and apply. And once you're here, uh, it might prompt you to reboot. So go ahead and reboot, and then open this back up again. Um, once you're here, you need to check on your displays most most importantly get them functioning to the best of their abilities like your resolution needs to be the right resolution your refresh rate probably want to put that at the highest you can do like by default it will select 60 almost all the time but this is 144 hertz monitor so I want it to be at 144 hertz and the other thing that commonly happens especially with HDMI monitors is that your um, uh, your overscanning and underscanning is just not quite right. So if you got like a black rectangle along the outside of the um, screen, then make sure you check out your overscan and underscan. Or if it's too scratched and you can't see the whole screen. So check out your overscan and underscan for that. Alright, well that concludes this video guys. If you like this video, go ahead, show me some love and hit that like button. Subscribe if you got the time. If you didn't like this video, Go watch a different video, I'm not really that concerned. 